Hey everybody, Adam Savage alongside Lisa Young. Hello. Hello. We are in the conservation department at the National Air and Space Museum. And Lisa literally knows where all the bodies are buried here, including this one. Um, can we unveil? Sure, let's do it. All right. I'll have to do it with my gloves on here. Um, this is a really special, <gasps> I only caught a glimpse of this before we were shooting. This is so beautiful. This is one of the very earliest prototype suits, developmental, uh, from ILC. It's an AX-1L. And AX one so it's means Apollo. the first, first edition of some of the stuff they were working out to eventually build that lunar suit. Oh my gosh. Is this, I'm sorry, I'm just a little overwhelmed because it looks like it was built last week. I, there's, it looks so good. It, the materials are good. Uh, the rubber is very oh. fragile and brittle. <laughs> so it's a little frozen in time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the zipper is operational. Um, there's no corrosion on it. Preservation wise, it is stable. Um, it is, I would say it is fragile though. We, yeah. we do yeah. have some issues going on with the rubber rubberized uh, convolutes here. And a lot of these rubberized sections were in trial at this point to determine uh, better flexibility, mobility, when they were going to wear a soft suit. Uh, this suit, the zipper configuration in the front is unlike many of the Apollo suits that you probably have mm -hmm. seen or even other suits worn in the spacecrafts, yeah. um, was abandoned because I, I'm understood that when you are using a front zipper and your body is um, in a couch or a seat or like when the command launch module, or yes, yeah, in the yeah. launch, um, it can cause failure to the zipper configuration and then you'll get leaks in your bladder. So if you're bending the zipper too much, its seal isn't... Right, they were afraid of failure. <sighs> wow. So they moved that zipper configuration to the back of most of the other suits. And is this, am I correct, this would be the underneath, like the white outer coating? This one would not. This oh. is simply a developmental... Uh, journey to oh, get to the A5L or the other reiterations of suits that then became the restraint and bladder layer for the other suits. Wow. So this, so is, this is really an engineering prototype. prototype. Wow. Uh, that is so fascinating. And the boots are integrated with the suit. So this would have had external boots. This is the pressure bladder here that would have extended up through the, the body underneath this. Uh, this right here okay. would have been the pressure zipper, um, the pressure seal. So it has that internal bladder. Um, this, so this is a cover. Um, these were tested in other forms and I don't remember how many. Yeah. Um, just to try to see, um, they were much bulkier sizing and restraint systems to them, then which they, have, they later went to the more integrated lacing and some oh. of the features we see today. So like this strap here is meant for sizing the suit right. to the astronaut, whereas now they'd have lacing to be right. able to adjust. More accurate, I think, right, and just right. comfortable. That's one of the things I kept reading about, about this suit is it was just not comfortable. Um, so they did have to work on a lot of, because you need, if you needed to use it for two or three days, yeah. um, it would have to be comfortable. I noticed so many little details that hark to other suits. I noticed the uh, the communications uh, uh, port here is on the leg, which is a Mercury, like Mercury and Gemini had it there. Or no, right. Mercury had it there. Gemini had it up yep. here. Um, the red and blue wrist rings are total, a design I have never seen. And they include this. They, they look almost like a hybrid between Apollo and Mercury wrist connects. Yeah, they. I have seen them on some of the earlier Mercury, these wide wide fitted ones yeah. um, or on other developmental models, but they definitely have a much broader a ring and um, the locking system and uh, clips to get them on and off are not as distinguished. Really? Um, and they look a little bit more difficult, I would say. Um, I'm also noticing this port, which very much looks like a Mercury port, that square Right, and then twist. unseal, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yet it's got this, um, the, the, this little like uh, protuberance, which I've seen in other suits, that looks like an airflow guy. Right, I think it, yeah, just like compressed when you put the, when you put the valve on there. Oh, I'm, uh, I don't want to move the zipper apart, but I see some wiring inside. Is that part of the oh, communication so, yeah, assembly? So, no, this is actually um, part of the, um, yes, it is part of the, the communication and it's a strap that they would have wrapped around oh. themselves. We're trying to decide right now what to do with it with the mannequin because it just kind of lies in there. 
Um, but and he then, is attached to the suit. Right. Very old Velcro, this black Velcro that was also not utilized in the program pretty much after Apollo 1. Um, they had to change the formula of that Velcro and then the communication wires. So um, it is all wired to this port and yeah. it's not removable. <laughs> um, so what we'll probably do is stabilize the materials and then yeah. uh, uh, segregate them or put a barrier, uh, probably like a cloth so pouch that nothing around that it. this is off gassing will affect anything right else and we can keep it static within the suit when we move the mannequin in and out now and when, it's not free floating when you say stabilize i'm really curious about the deteriorating rubber convolutes here on the knees the hips and the elbows and shoulders um how do you keep those from getting worse or when they're brittle it must be terrifying to put this on a mannequin um yes <laughs> <laughs> let me get this little thing back in um the thing is, um, once the rubber has sort of reached its end life of off-gassing and sort of moving out its plasticizers and becoming more brittle and rigid, uh, there's not much you can do to reverse that. So hmm. that's a cumulative effect over time. Uh, some of it is just the nature of the rubber, which was a neoprene latex blend, yeah. uh, synthetic and um organic rubber together. They just don't mix well. Yeah. And then also just the fact that it would have had a shelf life of six months and it's been now, this is probably number 1962. So we're talking 60, 60 years. years. Wow. Um, so the only thing we can really do to slow down the continued deterioration is it is to make sure that the suit is supported. So the mannequin will have to really be shaped to support the actual textile components and rubber on display. Um, and then that it's kept in a stable environment. So uh, we can clean it. We can kind of um, shift some of it around if it is flexible still mm -hmm. um, and fill out those uh, peaks and valleys. But we try to just use our environment, our temperature, relative humidity, making sure it has ventilation, um, minimize handling to it, which causes problems. Yeah. I mean, we would love to handle our suits a lot more, yeah. uh, but that's why they're all on these special boards. So every time we move it in the lab, we're not touching the materials over and over. Fair enough. Um, and we can stabilize it by um, keeping it in that very tight environment. Does the front opening cause any extra problems for you? You can't just stuff a mannequin in this. It has to go in in pieces, am I right? Right, and this zipper is com very small. <laughs> the front is not the problem. It's the zipper configuration is only sort of two feet long. Yeah. And we have big body pieces to put in. So we'll probably have to feed the legs and arms in first. Was, and we usually put the arms through here and then down. Right. We don't put them through the interior. Um, the legs we put in, uh, the toes will be a challenge in this um, instance because in the past people seem to want to stuff out the feet yeah. and they would shove things continually down there and we just worked really hard to get all the stuff out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and using our boroscope and looking down there with microscope and, wow. and trying to investigate what was going on safely yeah. um, and then we'll build the torso in here and then this one will be challenging to stand up. We haven't decided exactly how we can. Yeah, because where do you pick it? So we have developed sort of um an armature yeah. system where we do a bicycle seat and oh. looking type of form mm -hmm. we do with the exhibits and they 3D form it and everything for us where we can just have it resting sort of on something that kind of cradles the backside and then under the bottom of the zipper um, and probably under the arms. And that helps really stabilize the whole the whole suit so it's not hanging just off the shoulders. Right, and we did do that for Shepard, but it had boots. So the added problem is now we don't really want it resting with weight Right. on our soft feet. So that will be the other issue. Uh, the other way I've done the very soft, fragile suits in the past where it's just been too much for them to take a mannequin is we build a plexi form behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we pick it in several spots and we attach it almost to like a board, like a, a quilted textile, yeah. like a costume conservator yeah. would do. And we just slant the board so it doesn't go anywhere, but it just leans up against something not standing upright on its own. But yeah. I think we can get this standing up on its own. Uh, but is that still up in the air? It may be that you- It may be. It may I be. just have to see really how fragile it is and how much work it's gonna take. But we have till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that does so not one sound- one more week. <laughs> that does not sound like enough time. I was just thinking this sounds like weeks of work. Well, we did, we did. We wanted weeks of work, but our deadlines are short. And I have a team of people working on it and they're really great. So yeah. everything we do here is a team, just like your work. 
Um, we have many brains on it and we will get through it. Um, I'm curious, lastly, about these these strips coming out of the yeah. wrist connectors. So what this is, that? is a little bit like Mercury and Gemini where they had the ventilation hoses um, through here, but they weren't secured to anything at this point. Um, and this looks like a thumb catch. So the astronaut had to kind of weave their arms past weave all their this arms stuff. Through and then pull those out like, you know, mittens or something. Yeah. And then they would have the glove come on. So they'd have ventilation into their hands, which right. must have been lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For everything they were doing. Um, yeah. I think it's just to keep the hoses sort of open mm -hmm. because, you know, if they get crumpled up into a sleeve, you're not going to have them working correctly. Oh, fair enough. But yeah, um, there was ventilation throughout the suit. Where will this go up on display? Uh, this will be in a display in our new gallery, Destination Moon, mm -hmm. uh, which is opening to the public this fall uh, on the first half of our museum, which is renovated downtown in Washington, D.C. And it will be in a case with two other Apollo prototype suits uh, showing the evolution of them building the suits. So with the A1C and the A5L, along with the uh, sewing machine that built um, Neil Armstrong spacesuit. Yeah. And uh, that will be very exciting, I think, for the public to see that sort of side of displaying spacesuits, not just because it was on a mission and associated with a particular astronaut, but yeah. all that engineering behind everything. The, the, the idea of the A5L, the A1C, and this all in one case, they're all such unique colors for what period they represent. It's going to, I feel like people are going to be like, what kind of suits are those? That's going to be a really awesome display. It will. And there's never enough room on a label to say everything you could say about <laughs> these three really important suits. And I know the curators get frustrated with that, but I get frustrated with that because there's so much science behind everything and, yeah. and so much that goes into our work. And even people understanding how you get a mannequin in to display a spacesuit is just um, just left out. And so that's where we add those public programs and walk around tours and add-ons where we can take our friends and colleagues around and say, you know, this is not what you're seeing on the label, but this is how it works. Yeah. So it's, it's really going to be exciting. I'm excited for this display. Yeah. That it, it, the, the history of spacesuit development is so fascinating and it's still not done. We're not no. finished. Nope. They're so changing this, every day and this coming is, back to the old versions and looking at them. Yeah. And, oh, so pe engineers of new suits come in to look at these things. Yeah, they're always asking us strange questions or, or coming up with something. And then, um, you know, we have to correct them because they're new engineers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are like a bastion of institutional knowledge that is so important in this process. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it's, it's been a journey and... Um, we have seen a lot of suits. You know, we have a large collection that the public does not see. And it's, you know, we do try to get that material out there. But um, it's nothing like seeing them in person, like mm -hmm. you said, and getting to experience them. A hundred percent. Nothing like seeing it in person. Lisa, what a treat. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I never get tired of visiting the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. I always find something new to lock onto. And the tail on display of human ingenuity is always inspiring. If you'd like to get a better sense of what it's like to stand in front of a space shuttle or visit the Spacesuit Conservation Lab, we also filmed this in virtual reality as part of the Tested VR series. You can watch this right now, either through the Tested VR app or on MetaQuest TV. Links and instructions are in the description below. Thanks, you guys, for watching.